Good morning, sisters. The intentions for Holy Mass today are for, for Sister Catherine on the 46th anniversary of her profession and for healing and recovery for Randolph Leonardo, Brenda Peterson and Phil and those recommended to our prayers and for the eternal repose of the soul of Antonio Carmona Garcia and for the souls in purgatory and peace in the world. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Let not our enemies exult over us. Redeem us, O God of Israel, from all our distress. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look kindly, Lord, we pray, on the devotion of your people, that those who by self-denial are restrained in body, may by the fruit of good works be renewed in mind. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breath. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he cried, Yet forty days, and Nineveh, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Then tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he made proclamation and published through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, let them, not, let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows, God may yet repent and turn from his fierce anger so that we perish not. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. 
the word of the Lord. A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. A broken and humble heart, O God, you will not spare. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. A broken and humble heart, O God. You will For in sacrifice you take no delight. Burnt offering from me would not please you. My sacrifice to God, a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spurn. A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spurn. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. When the crowds were increasing, Jesus began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign shall be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will arise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, Something greater than Solomon is here. The people of Nineveh will arise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The Gospel of the Lord. In times of crisis, political, social, or even health crisis, people are looking for signs. And we saw last week how Mark uh, spoke about the signs. And today we have Luke's account that no sign will be given but the sign of Jonah. Jonah was a sign because of the dramatic events of his life uh, becoming signs to the people. Jonah was pitched overboard, you will remember, in the fierce storm at sea when he was trying to escape from his vocation as a prophet. He was pitched overboard to save the ship and Jesus was thrown into the maelstrom of suffering and even death to save humankind. Jonah, in this famous story, was gobbled up by a whale and spent three days in the belly of the whale. And then he was pitched onto the dry land. Jesus 
spent three days in the belly of the earth, the bowels of the earth, and then raised to glory. So in these ways, Jonah was a sign, because of what happened to Jonah was also symbolic of what was happening and would happen to Jesus. But Jonah, despite his early reluctance, became a great prophet of conversion. So much so that, as the scripture said in the first reading, when Jonah preached, they repented. Jesus preached repentance. Indeed, just a week ago, we began this season of repentance with a call, Jesus' call, to repentance. And so today we need to pray for alertness to God's presence in daily life, to the signs that are all around us, if we could but see the way in which God deals with individuals, with nations, with movements in society, the way in which God works through heartbreak, through storms and difficulties. But we want a sensitivity. We want a greater sensitivity uh, to this mystery of repentance, of identifying more closely with the sufferings all around us, the sufferings of the poor, the sufferings of those who are trapped in habits which they want to get rid of, the suffering that each person carries there along their way of the cross. And so with one week only so far of Lent, we need to ask ourselves, are we growing in that sensitivity into the mystery of the passion? Or is it leaving us unmoved so far? A ritual that we go through anyway every year, but doesn't spark anything in us. And so we pray for that sensitivity, that we may see the sign in our midst. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So let us pray together that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Church. We offer you, O Lord, what you have given to be dedicated to your name, that just as for our benefit, 
you make these gifts a sacrament, so you may let them become for us an eternal remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and your resurrection. And we hail you, God. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters <coughs> who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have From my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
When I called, the God of justice gave me answer. From anguish you released me. Have mercy, O Lord, and hear my prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who never ceased to nourish us by your sacrament, grant that the refreshment you give us through it may bring us unending life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go and serve the Lord with our lives.